Hello guys, on this channel we have a monthly tradition of gathering tips and tricks from Twitter over the last month. So time for October recap, now publishing it in November. It will be roughly around 15 tips and tricks or so. Let's go. The first tweet comes from Osama here and it's about carbon. Have you ever needed to have difference in dates but with some condition? Let me zoom in that example. So this is the image. You have start and end and for example you want to not count the weekend days. So there is a function diff in days filtered and then you define that filter whether the date is weekend or not. So as you can see in the example at days is 10 but the result of if in days filtered is eight. The second tip comes from myself and it's actually the news about Laravel. They released a new way of installation. This is aimed at total beginners and this is the screenshot from the docs. You do curl to php.new install Mac. It will install PHP, Composer and Laravel installer. And this is the first tweet I tweeted about it on October 9th. But then a week later, I noticed that they changed something in the docs. So if you compare the Laravel docs now with the version like a month ago or so, you will notice this difference. Let me zoom that in. Basically composer create project isn't even mentioned in the docs anymore. It still works and you can still use it. It's not removed, it's not deprecated anything. But since Laravel docs are aimed mostly at beginners in Laravel, they decided to make that php.new kind of the official way to minimize the fragmentation because historically even I remember that Laravel had too many ways to install it many ways to install the same tools, many starter kit and fragmentation, which basically confused new developers. And also related to that, in the docs, they removed PHP artisan serve in favor of the new command composer run dev. And what that composer run dev does, it will start not only PHP server, but also Q worker and Vite development server. This is optional. Again, you can still use PHP artisan serve. It's just changes in the docs. So you would not be surprised if next time you read the docs and you don't find composer create project or PHP artisan serve. The next tip, quick tip, comes from Harris here, who's really active on Twitter lately, showing how to update JSON columns with arrow syntax that works with those databases specified. Here's the screenshot zoomed in. Just use query builder, update JSON column. The next tip comes from Lara Shout, and it's about once function. Once helper, global helper in Laravel, so it doesn't require any use on top. It's kind of like a cache. You can do a callback function here and that once will save it for the whole request of Laravel. So during one page, if you call the same function twice, one of the ways is of course to save that into a variable, but maybe once is more elegant sometimes. But as usual with caching, my comment is be careful with caching. Know when the data comes from cache and when it needs to be recalculated. The next tip comes from myself, but actually the history is from Aaron Francis tweet. So he tweeted his example on Twitter and I've noticed this thing. This line of code zoomed in where it doesn't have query of type happened after. What is that syntax? That syntax is local scopes. And I've tried to guess what's inside that model. So scope of type with parameter of type, which adds that where condition then becomes of type here. Similarly, scope happened after with the parameter of time adds where condition here, and then it becomes happened after. And the most elegant part is that you can combine those scopes chaining them like here Aaron did in his example. The next tip comes from Aniket here and it's about pivot tables. And did you know that you cannot just create the pivot table in migration and then define the belongs to many between two models, but also you can create a separate pivot model for that pivot table that extends pivot. It doesn't extend model. And then from that table, you can add more columns inside and also use more relationships like this. Again, I will zoom that example in. So for example, you have role user with two columns, role ID and user ID, but also there could be the third column assigned by with the foreign key. 
And then what you're able to do is not only access the role pivot as a model, but also use the relationships from inside of it. So you can do something like role pivot assigned by name. The next tip is kind of three in one. So Jack posted on Twitter that there's a data get global helper in Laravel that allows you to retrieve a value from a nested array or object. That's the important part. It's not just for array, it's for data get. So you don't need to convert objects to arrays to work with them like array. And this is particularly useful when you don't even know what will come. It may come as array or an object from somewhere, the data, and then you use data get, so both would work. But then also related from Aniket, another helper for getting the data, multidimensional arrays, objects, or a mix of both is covered by Fluent. So this is the example. You create a Fluent object with array of multidimensional data, and then you dump data user or data user as object. Also data get would work with dot notation. And similar example from Amit, the same month two people tweeted about it, maybe seeing each other or not. So this is another example. Data in array, then you get fluent, and then you can call get in a chain right away. So you don't even need to create that object separately. It may be in the same line, in one liner. The next tip, very quick one from Lara Shout. Did you know that you can do file JSON to read the JSON structure instead of separately getting the file content and then doing JSON decode. Just call file JSON, it's shorter. The next tip comes from myself while working with PEST on one of the courses I discovered or I reused the example of data sets and some people on Twitter were surprised that data sets do not have to be static. So you can repeat the same test with different set of data, and that set may be created on the fly with factories. So this is what we used in one of the courses to test that some feature is working with different roles that are covered by factory methods. Next two tips, I will kind of group them together. It's again from Osama and about Carbon. It seems like Osama has been reading Carbon Docs or something like that, so a lot of tips from there, but actually Carbon is kind of a hidden gem, a lot of hidden gems inside of the docs, so here are a few of them. So you can have one Carbon object of date, and then you can compare which of other two dates is the closest or the farthest, the most distant one from the original date. As simple as that. And then another simple tip from Osama related to Carbon, if we open in new tab, there's a property called age on any given date. So that compares that date with today and calculates the age of that person, which may be related to birthdays, for example. So it works also if you cast some eloquent column with carbon. The next tip comes from Ash and it's about PHP, not that much about Laravel. Null coalescing assignment operator. It's a very difficult name, but it means only three symbols. And this is a typical example. You want to assign some variable value if it is null. If it's not null, you don't want to change that. So this would be a typical way to write that, but with PHP with this operator, it's shorter. The next tip is also about carbon, but from another angle. It comes from Aniket, and then it is updated with another comment. And let me show you the first, the problem. So by default, carbon changes the original object. If you do something like add month or any operation, it doesn't just assign that to a variable, but it also modifies the original object. Here's a zoomed in version, so you can use date copy, or instead of carbon now, you could use a class called carbon immutable. And this is exactly what the retweet is about. So Ponyapal is suggesting to do it on the next level globally in Laravel application. So not just change carbon now to carbon immutable now, but also configure it globally somewhere, for example, in your app service provider. So that configure dates, that function doesn't belong to Laravel. I found another example of configure dates in another blog post. So for example, in the app service provider, you do some global settings and one of those settings may be private function of configure dates. And final tip comes from myself, not that much of a tip, more like a tweet with general message, kind of overall message around those tips is there are many ways to do something in Laravel and also related many ways to install Laravel locally. So recently I made a poll about Windows web servers and see how even is the split. 
So yes, Laravel Heard kind of took the market by storm as being kind of the first party, the official and easy to use, but it's not like 80 or 90% or even 50%. It's a good chance for me to, again, put on the cap of it depends. So any tip that you saw in this video may be depending on your project situation and you're probably totally fine if you're doing things differently. What do you think? Which tip resonated with you the most? And as usual, we will continue that tradition next month, gathering tips from Twitter. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.